starting us off at number 10 is the Bassano Vase. And this one comes with its fair share of baggage to say the least. So the Bassano Vase is a silver vase that was made sometime in the 15th century. So it definitely qualifies as antique. And before you guys are like, it's vase, it's not. <laughs> now the story goes like this. A young bride was gifted the vase the night of her wedding, but she never ended up making it to the altar that night. She was murdered the same night with the vase in her hand and the murderer was just never caught. As an homage to her, the vase was passed down in her family, but whoever seemed to get it would meet a horrible fate soon after. The vase owners all met unexpected death, so much so the family decided to box the vase away altogether. However, in 1988, it resurfaced and was found with a note that said, Beware, this vase brings death. Well, no sh Karen. Whoever found the vase failed to include that note when he later auctioned off the vase, so the pharmacist who ended up buying it died three months later. A surgeon was next in line to buy it, and he too died within two months, despite only being 37 years old. Next up in line was an archaeologist, dead within two months, and the owner after that died within one month. So already that's four deaths, not even including the ones from the original family owners, and that's a lot. When the lid of the vase is removed, it's meant to almost attract people that have murderous intentions towards it and so what ends up happening is that it successfully does attract those killers and then those killers just murder the vase's owner. Italian newspapers claim the police confiscated it and buried it in a lead box in an unknown location and it's probably for the best. I'm not trying to die by no goddamn vase. I nah. What a cop out death. I'm not here to be such a you know live savage and then be killed by a vase like that's just not happening for me. <laughs> in our number 9 spot we have the Jeffrey Dahmer blade. This is one of the most chilling items that I found. This is a kitchen cooking blade that has the face of known killer Jeffrey Dahmer. Why does this product even exist? I don't understand people. Jeffrey Dahmer is known for being a cannibal and so this product just pushes the envelope a little too much for me. Upon inspecting the item I noticed that six people bought it and 45 people are watching the item. Who are these six people and 45 watchers? I demand a reason for buying this item. Unless it is for Halloween purposes. Actually, no. Even still, this is too dark. Imagine the headspace you have to be in to even think of this item. I'm scared, let's move on. In our number eight spot, we have the angry baby face. Maybe it's because I'm creeping up on my motherhood years, or maybe it's because this is genuinely, supremely creepy. I'm really unsure, but would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. This is an angry baby face mask. Actually, it's a collection of baby face masks with an angry version, a crying version, and a happy version. And all of them are quite disturbing. I think the happy version is the most nerve wracking to be honest. The baby looks like Gollum when he finally has the ring in his hands. I think the eyes are possibly the worst part. So big and grayish blue. I'm concerned that 48 people bought this, but whatever. In our number seven spot, we have the pig mask. Has anyone ever seen the show Black Mirror? And the first episode is with the politician and the pig? Yep, quite the disturbing show and not gonna lie, ever since that episode I've had a hard time with pigs. Actually, that's a lie, I just have never liked pigs that much if I'm being honest. <laughs> the only pig that I ever loved was from the movie Babe. Okay fine, and the one from Charlotte's Web. Anyways, this is a mask of an angry pig. Guys, did you know that pigs sometimes eat their babies? Pigs are scary, okay? This mask gives me the creeps and it's absolutely cursed. 43 people have have bought this item. Correction, 43 sociopaths have bought this item. In our number six spot, we have the family heirloom. This is a ring that is pretty creepy to look at. It's quite old and worn out and is supposedly an heirloom to the Borgia family, a prominent Italian family. This heirloom is a piece that dates back to the 1600s. It is also a piece of jewelry that is said to be haunted as it was a part of an Ed and Lorraine case at one point in its history and the case dealt with a lot of suffering. The ring is made of gold and the stones have not been identified. I've never seen a stone like it, it almost looks otherworldly. The ring has a set price of, wait for it, 3,000 US dollars. 
a lot of money to spend on a possession that is definitely cursed. In our number five spot, we have Aladdin's lamp. This item is probably cursed, but also it's really cool, so I'm conflicted as to how I feel about it. I was a hardcore Aladdin fan, not gonna lie, and I have to admit, Aladdin was definitely my first crush. <laughs> He's a dreamer who does what he can to make his dreams happen, so gotta love that in a man. Anyways, this lamp speaks to me. Does that mean whatever is haunting it is speaking to me? Does that mean I'm already being tricked? Anyways, very confusing. The seller of this lamp claims it to be haunted as well as that it possesses powers. It's also really dirty. Not sure if this seller decided to leave it dirty so that it looks like it came straight out of the desert of Agrabah, but I just, I don't understand. Like, why couldn't you have wiped it down? Like, even a little. My cleaning OCD is acting up, so let's move on. In our number four spot today, we have a haunted ring. The title of this product is literally haunted ring, so do we think it's cursed? I'm leaning towards yes. <laughs> this might be the spookiest ring that I have ever seen. It has a brassy look to it with what looks like a bird at the top, then honestly what looks like stitching or maybe a tally of something underneath, and then the letters R-O-M and some more stitching or tallying of something. It's so strange. Upon further investigation, apparently there is supposed to be an A at the end of the R-O-M, meaning it's supposed to spell out Roma, and apparently this is a ring that was made for a man for his wife named Roma, who was a survivor of World War II. Dark. Honestly, if this was a gesture of love, couldn't he have just written, I love you? Some men need guidance. <laughs> In our number three spot, we have the clown painting. This is a painting of a clown that literally looks like it's looking into your soul. <laughs> or perhaps it's looking into your ear and getting ready to pull a coin out of it, but regardless, I'm scared. It's cursed. There's clearly a spirit attached to this painting. This painting is from the 60s, and I truly wonder who in the world <laughs> bought this painting back then. Also, I want to know where in the house this painting would be hung if bought, because I don't think there is a room that it would not be creepy in. Unless you had a room of clown merch, then perhaps it wouldn't be as creepy. It would just add to the collective creep vibe, but still. If you have a happy clown story and are convinced you can make me less scared of clowns, please share it with me in the comment section below. In our number two spot, we have this old Ouija board. This one might be a given as it's literally a tool to talk to the dead, but whatever, I had to put it on the list because it's clearly cursed and we should definitely stay away from this item. This is a very old version of the board that has probably passed through the hands of many in its time and it is so dark and spooky looking that it just gives me the creeps. When people play Ouija, they could be talking to good or bad spirits and they say that the bad ones can actually attach to you if you're not careful. I truly wish this game came with a list of player stories so people could be aware of how psychologically damaging it can be. I had a very dark experience with this game, so definitely stay away and do not buy it. In our number one spot, we have the Illuminati New World Order card game. Okay, I had to put this one in first because it's honestly intense. This is a card game that was invented in 1994 by an artist named Steve Jackson. This isn't just any card game though, oh no. This is a card game that has predicted a lot of crazy events that have happened in world history. There's too many predictions to count at this point, but the very fact that it was invented in 1994 and there is literally a card with two buildings and one exploding, similar to a certain attack that happened in 2001 in New York City, is mind blowing. This deck is called the Illuminati New World Order, which makes you wonder, was this a prophetic game? Or was this quite possibly made by an insider that was subtly warning the world of what is to come? In any case, this item is definitely cursed as the cards keep coming true, so beware. 
Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Crying Children paintings. These paintings were a series created by an Italian painter who was known as Giovanni Bragolin, but his real name was Bruno Amarillo. Bruno was born in Venice in 1911 and fought in World War II, which ended up being the inspiration for a lot of his paintings. During his time in the war, he saw a lot of suffering children, and this is where he got the idea for the series of Crying Children paintings. After the paintings were sold, there began to be reports of fires in all of the places where the paintings were held. While this could have just been a strange coincidence, the weirdest part is that the paintings always remained intact while everything else around them was burned. This quickly became the most talked about thing and was on the front of every newspaper and the paintings quickly gained the nickname Diablo. It caused these paintings to end up being replicated and mass produced, but none of the replicas hold quite the same power as the originals. In our number 9 spot today we have the Iceman. Okay, this one is not an object because it is rather a mummy who was once a real living person, but I still had to include him on this list today because this story is wild. The mummy of Otzi, who is also referred to as the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otsal Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otzi lived around 3000 BCE and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Otzi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing the people who helped with the discovery of Otzi are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean, we're currently at person number 7 within one year, so that's very suspicious. When molecular archaeologist Tom Loy was writing a book about Otzi, he passed away from a blood related condition that he was diagnosed with shortly after becoming involved with the Iceman. The German tourist Helmut Simon, who discovered the mummy, fell to his death while hiking in the same spot he saw Otzi. Dieter Warneck, who was the head of the mountain rescue team that was assigned to find the mummy, died of a heart attack at age 45 just an hour after Simon's funeral. To avoid this becoming an hour long list, I'll stop here, but that is just half of those who seemingly fell victim to the curse of the Iceman. I don't know, maybe disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea anyone has ever had. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Hope Diamond. This gorgeous, unusually large diamond is a blue color and worth an insane two. $250 million. In the off chance you have that kind of money laying around, I still wouldn't recommend purchasing it because it is said to be cursed. The curse dates back to the 17th century and it is said that whoever wears the diamond will have great misfortune and misery. Legend goes that the diamond was stolen from the eye of a sculpted statue of the Hindu goddess Sita and since then it has been cursing whoever owns or possesses the 115 carat diamond. Stories of the horrible fates of those who have since owned the diamond include people taking taking their own lives, people being killed intentionally by others, and some accounts even claim that the owner was quote, torn to pieces, which sounds like one of the worst fates out there. There have since been replicas made of the stone and I think just to be as safe as possible, I'll probably stay away from those just in case. In our number 7 spot today we have Robert the doll. Annabelle gets a lot of attention for being a haunted doll, but Robert is just as terrifying. Robert the doll was a childhood birthday gift from a grandfather to his grandson, who was also named Robert, but more often went by Jean. The story claims that while growing up with Robert, Jean would often be heard by his parents in his bedrooms having conversations with himself in two entirely different voices. His parents would sometimes be woken up in the middle of the night to the sound of Jean screaming, only to find him completely frightened in bed with overturned furniture around him. Jean would then blame Robert for all of the strange happenings and at the time no one really believed him. Jean kept Robert into adulthood and it became what people would describe as an unhealthy relationship. Apparently Jean took Robert everywhere with him and spoke as if he was a living entity rather than a doll. Ok, this story is already not great, but it gets worse. Jean lived in a house as an adult that was called the artist's house. Robert would be left in the upstairs window where children in the area reported seeing the doll disappear and reappear, and they all chose to just stay clear of the house. After Jean passed away in 1974, a woman named Myrtle purchased the house and apparently Robert as well. Visitors of the house could swear that they could hear footsteps and giggling coming from the attic where Robert was, and some even claimed to see the doll's expression changed if someone spoke poorly of Jean. Myrtle reported Robert moving around the house on his own, and after 20 years, she decided she had had enough and donated him to a museum. Robert still lives in the museum where 
he is safely locked up, but it is said that he still likes to place a little curse on those who take his photo without permission. The walls of the museum near Robert's glass case are riddled with notes from previous visitors and naysayers who are begging Robert for his forgiveness and asking him to remove any curse he has placed on them. In our number 6 spot today we have the Atlantis Ring. The Atlantis Ring was originally made of clay and it was found in 1860 in the Valley of the Kings in a tomb of an Egyptian high priest. It was then passed on to Howard Carter who kept it until he passed away in 1939. The ring was believed to be at least 5,000 years old and it had geometric symbols carved into it that were unlike anything known in Egypt. Here's where the story gets a little weird though. Howard is one of the people who discovered King Tut's tomb and he would later tell people he was wearing a talisman when the tomb was opened, also known as the Atlantis Ring. He claimed that the ring gave him protection and that just might be true because he is the only member of the team who didn't die a mysterious death after the opening of the tomb. Even those who visited shortly after the opening of the tomb were subject to this curse with a total of 18 victims in the end. Howard said that the ring is what protected him against whatever evil forces were at play. So I guess maybe the Atlantis ring is more like an anti-cursed object? I don't know, but what I do know is that it is all quite curious. There are now replicas that are sold, but I'm not sure if any hold the power of the real deal. In our number 5 spot today we have Thomas Busby's chair. Thomas was a man who lived in Thirsk, North Yorkshire and wasn't known as a very nice man, but he really loved his chair. I guess we all gotta have something. In 1702 he found his father-in-law sitting in it and it sparked an argument between the two. The father-in-law threatened to take his daughter back, which like should have never been a threat considering she's a grown woman, but I guess that's what went on in 1702. Anyway, that's when Busby kicked him out of the house. After this, Busby ended up going over to the father-in-law's house and actually killed him with a hammer and then hid his body in the woods. Of course the body ended up being found and this led to Busby getting convicted and sentenced to death. It is said that on his ride to the execution he asked to stop by his favourite pub for a beer and this request was fulfilled. Apparently as he finished his drink he said, May sudden death come to anyone who dares sit in my chair. I really don't know what it is with this guy in his chair, but while it currently resides in the Thirsk Museum, it has been recorded that many terrible fates have been met by the people who have sat in the chair. In 1972 it was decided to hang the chair from the ceiling so that no one could ever sit in it again which is probably for the best. So now, knowing this story, I want you to let me know in the comments if you had the chance, would you sit in the chair? I wouldn't. <laughs> In our number 4 spot today we have Annabelle the doll. When I saw the 2014 Annabelle movie I had no idea it was actually based on a real life doll, but since starting my job here at Most Amazing Top 10 I know all about the real story. This doll now resides inside of the Warren's Occult Museum where it absolutely belongs, but this story starts off with a college student named Donna who received the doll as a gift from her mother who had purchased it from an antique store. Donna and her roommate started to notice some pretty creepy things happening and swore that the doll was moving. They said it would appear in different places and positions throughout their apartment before things began to escalate. Donna began to find notes that said help in her apartment and one night found the doll in a different position and covered in some sort of red substance. The girls then decided to contact a medium who solidified all of their beliefs and told them that the doll had been possessed by the spirit of someone who was killed in their apartment building. For some reason the girls didn't immediately get rid of the doll and the story goes that their friend Lou who was at the girls apartment heard strange noises one night and went to investigate and he was then attacked and killed by Annabelle. The girls finally contacted a priest who told them that the doll was possessed by a demon straight from hell and then put them in contact with Ed and Lorraine Warren. They tried to do an exorcism on the doll but it apparently failed and now it is kept in a glass box in the museum where it hopefully cannot and will never do any more damage. In our number 3 spot today we have the Uluru Rock. The Uluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes known as Ayers Rock but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to this place. This is part of the reason that those who visit the rock are asked not to take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. Well, other than the bad karma and just in general feeling feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do, as it turns out this rock may hold a more
more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and even sometimes the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Apparently these letters come so often at least one a day is expected. Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it just seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number 2 spot today we have the Bizano vase. The Bizano vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night however the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breath she vowed to have her revenge and at this point it became unclear whether the vase was already cursed or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on the vase was handed from person to person within her family and with each new owner came a mysterious death. Because of this the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of secret location and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found the vase did not listen, and instead, they sold it once again. The first buyer, who is said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was the 37-year-old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with this vase in his possession, and at this point, you get where this is going. We don't know exactly where the vase ended up, but I'm hoping it's somewhere deep underground. Or maybe in space. Or maybe in the Mariana Trench, just anywhere far away from all of us. In our number one spot today, we have the Goddess of Death. This statue is sometimes also known as the Woman from Lem. This artifact, made out of limestone, was created sometime around 3500 BC and it was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years it has belonged to many different families who have all been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner and after four years, death began to come to him and his family. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed, but once the third family got a hold of it, several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum, where it thankfully still resides. However, the museum curator who handled the item was mysteriously killed a few days after. It is clear whatever curse this statue holds, it is strong and frightening. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have Musée de Horreur Octopus Men. <laughs> That's my French accent for ya. It failed. <laughs> this is a poster that honestly gave me the creeps to look at, which is my sign for the fact that <coughs> it's cursed. This is a replica of a French poster from 1899. This poster is of a man that is seemingly half man, half octopus. The man is also wearing an eye patch and looks quite stern, so overall, the vibe of this picture is just low. Not to mention, it's literally called the Museum of Horrors, so that just sets the tone for you to be scared. Words are powerful, folks. In our number 9 spot today we have The Hands Resist Him. The Hands Resist Him is a painting created by artist Bill Stoneham and it is supposed to represent the doorway that connects our world with the world of the spirits. The doorway to the other side. This is extra suspicious considering owners of the painting have claimed that they have seen the characters in the painting move or sometimes even disappear at night. The painting is said to depict Bill as a child looking quite sad with a doll with creepy hollow eyes. In the background you can see mysterious hands reaching out towards the boy. The creepiness of the painting is only elevated when we hear the stories of the reported three people who passed away after coming into contact with the painting. It ended up kind of disappearing for around 15 years until it popped back up on eBay. Even then, the seller warned potential buyers that the painting was haunted and claimed that the boy in the painting would come out of it and scare their child. The painting ended up being sold for $1,025 to a buyer in Michigan, and at this point, it's unclear if they've had any troubles with the rumored hauntings and curses. In our number 8 spot today we have the cursed phone number. I didn't know a phone number could be cursed, but apparently it's true, and I know a phone number technically isn't an object, but I still feel like this had to be included today because it's just too crazy to not. 
There was a Bulgarian phone number that is said to have been in use for 10 years before it was closed. The reason why it ended up being closed and put out of use is because it is rumored to have belonged to three separate people who all died of mysterious circumstances after having been assigned the phone number. Apparently all of the deaths took place shortly after the person had been assigned the number and they were all seemingly a bit suspicious, thus the rumors of the cursed telephone number began to spread. After this the company made the decision to suspend the phone number and they didn't give out details as to why. I wonder if the two are related. In our number 7 spot today we have the Belcourt Castle Chairs. Belcourt Castle is located in Newport, Rhode Island and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891 with it being completed in 1894 and inside there is a ballroom. The ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this specific set of chairs. The reports include things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines or feeling a strange sensation in a shift of energy while standing near the chairs and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing stories might be enough to explain the energy shift some people are feeling but actually being pushed out of a chair by some sort of invisible force would be absolutely terrifying. In our number 6 spot today we have the anguished man. While it is unknown who or when it was created, this painting is said to carry some kind of a curse. It is rumored that whoever created it mixed his blood with the oil paint and when he finished creating it, he ended up taking his own life. When a woman who is referred to as Mrs. Robinson originally took possession of the painting after it was given to her by a family friend, she immediately knew that something was wrong with it. She ended up passing it along to her grandson Sean who currently still owns the painting. When Sean hung the painting up, they apparently started experiencing paranormal events. The Robinson family has reported many different strange events that have happened in relation to the painting, such as hearing screams and groans coming from it, as well as hearing doors creaking when no one is around them, and being awoken in the middle of the night by blood curdling screams that they can't find the source of. Sean has even uploaded videos to YouTube where he shows these paranormal events, and it has been reported that the family now keeps the painting hidden away in the basement, which is probably for the best. In our number 5 spot today we have the dark mirror. This mirror now resides within the traveling museum of the paranormal and occult and just that alone is enough to know it deserves a spot on today's list. The museum received this mirror from the owner who had purchased it from a psychic fair. It is believed that this mirror was created sometime around the 1820s or 30s and it is actually quite beautiful to look at despite the sinister things it seems to hold. The owner who gave it to the museum explained that every time they peered into the mirror they saw these extremely upsetting things while looking into the dark mirror's reflection. The museum has said that since they added the mirror to their collection, there have been guests who have also reported the same kind of things. Guests have claimed to see things reflected back at them like sightings of their own corpse. In our number 4 spot today we have Old Nick. Old Nick is often referred to as the Swansea Devil and his story dates back to the 1890s, although he now resides in the Swansea Museum. So, back in the 1890s, there was the prestigious St. Mary's Church located located right in the center of town. The church decided to do some renovations and they put out some ads to hire someone. When a local builder applied for the job and was turned down, he had a major overreaction and decided he wanted to get some kind of revenge. He went and bought the row of cottages that lay next to the church and then demolished them all. In their place he built large brick offices and then commissioned the carving of Old Nick and placed him right on top of the office building looking down at St. Mary's Church. Legend goes that he even placed the curse himself by saying, quote, when your church is destroyed and burnt to the ground, my devil will remain laughing, end quote. Some years later during World War II, a German blitz came through the town and it left most of it, including St. Mary's, completely destroyed and burnt to the ground. But the office building with Old Nick was undamaged and remained standing. For a while, Old Nick seemed to kind of disappear, but once he resurfaced, there was a petition to put him back to where he was before, as well as a subsequent counter petition to put him far, far away from the rebuilt St. Mary's Church. As of now, Old Nick resides behind glass in the Swansea Museum and it is said that he is enclosed in glass more for our protection rather than his. In our number 3 spot today we have the Cursed Portrait. Bernardo de Galvez was born in Spain in 1746 and he went on to become a military leader. He became well known for helping American colonies during the War of Independence before he apparently
unfortunately passed away under mysterious circumstances in 1786. There is a portrait of Bernardo that resides in the Galvez Hotel in Galveston, Texas, which is said to be one of the most haunted hotels in the world. And that makes sense because this portrait is said to be one of the cursed objects that gives the hotel its spooky title. The portrait is located at the end of a hallway in the hotel and guests have reported the eyes following their every move. People also report a cold or uncomfortable feeling when they get close to the painting and this is said to be Bernardo's spirit. Some people even swear they can feel him following them around the hotel. It is also said that any picture you try to take of the portrait will come out blurry and distorted unless you ask Bernardo for permission first. In our number 2 spot today we have the Koh i Noor diamond. This diamond has an extremely controversial history and is the source of a lot of debate but regardless of the ongoing conversations over who really owns it, we are here to talk about the curse that this stone is said to hold. This diamond dates back thousands of years and its curse is said to only affect men. It is said that the jewel can bring about great wealth but it can also bring great misfortune as well to those who own it. Folklore states that he who owns this diamond will own the world but will also know all of its misfortunes. Only God or women can wear it with impunity. Throughout the history of the diamond it was passed among many people and rulers who all fought bloody battles while in possession of it. Every prince who had it is said to have ultimately lost either their power or their life while in possession of it as well. Part of the controversy of the diamond is how it ended up in the hands of the British royal family during colonization in the 1800s. Ever since then it has only been worn by female monarchs including Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. In our number one spot today we have James Dean's car. Okay, this one might seem like a bit of a wild card, but hear me out. Famous actor James Dean passed away from a car accident on September 30th, 1955. At the time, he was driving his silver Porsche 550 Spider, which he had just recently purchased. This was only the beginning of the car's curse, however, as after James' passing, the remnants of the totaled car were bought by a man named George Barris. He decided to sell parts of the car to James' fans, but when the car was being worked on and taken apart, it ended up falling on a mechanic mechanic and it crushed him to death. These two incidents are more than enough to now consider the car cursed, but it still continues on. Once the people who had purchased some of the car parts began receiving them, more strange things happened. Three of the people who received parts ended up in car accidents, all of which were sadly quite severe. The shell of the car was also stolen and to this day, it has never been recovered. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Anna Baker's wedding dress. In 1836, a man named Elias Baker purchased a mansion in Altoona, Pennsylvania and moved his small family in. Elias's oldest daughter was named Anna and when she fell in love with a steel worker, things took a very dark turn. Anna's father didn't want her dating this man but she kept doing it in secret. The story goes that Anna and the man planned a secret wedding and they were going to elope. Unfortunately, Elias found out and freaked out. He apparently purchased the steel mill that this man worked for and then forced him to have to move to an entirely different city so as to prevent him from being able to continue seeing Anna. Anna of course was furious with her father and I'm sure this was only made worse by his decision to offer other men to her, to which she of course declined because that's just weird. Anna instead locked herself in her room with her wedding dress that she never got to wear. Anna unfortunately never married after that and spent the rest of her life being terribly upset about the whole incident. After her death it is said that her anger and despair ended up going into the wedding dress. Members of of the Baker family reported seeing the dress in different places around the house despite no one moving it themselves. Some have even reported seeing Anna's spirit dressed in the gown around the house as well. In our number 9 spot today we have the Blarney Stone. For hundreds of years the Blarney Stone has resided within Blarney Castle which is near Cork, Ireland. The stone is a piece of limestone and legend says that those who give the stone a smooch will then be given the gift of the gab. This little smooch can bestow the power of being able to talk your way out of any situation, which would be incredibly useful, but there are always those who try to indulge in too much of a good thing. The issues start when you attempt to take a piece of the stone, no matter how small, away from its home. Those who don't follow the rules and take the stone end up being cursed with bad luck. Every year the castle receives parcels from greedy tourists who tried their luck at stealing portions of the stone. These parcels are returned with the intention of lifting the curse of misfortune. It is said that once the 
the stone is returned, the curse will be lifted, which is most definitely good news. I guess the moral of this curse, however, is to not be greedy and to just follow the rules. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Screaming Skull. The Screaming Skull resides in the Burton Agnes Hall in England, and it is thought to have belonged to Catherine Ann Griffith. It is said that Catherine was the youngest in the family, and she was the one who enjoyed wandering around the property the most. One day while she was out strolling around, she ended up being surrounded by a group of robbers who took all of her possessions and then viciously harmed her and left her for dead. She was found and brought back to the hall to be tended to, but unfortunately, a few days later, she succumbed to her injuries. Before she died, she was upset about the thought of leaving her family, so she asked them to remove her head after death and keep her skull so that they would always have a piece of her around. The family agreed to her face, but after her passing, they buried her body, head still intact, because to be fair, it was an odd request. After her burial, the family began experiencing some extremely strange things around the house, like bumps and moans and horrible blood curdling screams that they could not find the source of. This is when they decided to follow through with the request Catherine had left them, and the strange occurrences suddenly stopped. After this, at one point, a maid had found the skull, and in her surprise, she threw it out of a nearby open window, and alas, the strange occurrences began again. In the end, it was decided that the best policy was to place the skull in a secret spot within the walls of the house, probably behind some paneling in the Great Hall so that its presence could be easily ignored, and so that Catherine's spirit could reside in peace in her beloved home. I guess the lesson of this one is to follow the wishes of those who have passed because you never know if their spirit is going to stay lingering around after. Afterwards. In our number 7 spot today, we have the haunted doll. There's quite a few haunted dolls kicking around out there apparently, but this one doesn't exactly have a name. The doll's owners say that this doll is possessed and causes lots of troubles at night. The incredibly creepy thing about this one is that it is said that you don't need to do anything in order for this doll to decide it wants to haunt you, you just simply need to be around it and that is more than enough for the torment to start. Owners of the doll have reported getting a bunch of strange scratches which they believe are because of the doll. It isn't exactly clear where the spirit or spirits that reside in this doll have come from or what happened, but the doll was bought from its previous owners by a woman named Deborah Davies who is a psychic. Deborah reported the same scratches as the previous owners, but she also may have been able to contact the spirit residing in the doll. She claimed that the spirit was that of a young girl who had her life taken from her, but she also reported that the nasty evil energy within the doll is a male, and she believes that this energy is that of the man who took the life of the girl. At the end of the day, whatever is haunting this doll is certainly a spirit I would like to stay far, far away from. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Ballista Balls. A ballista was used in the Roman military and it was kind of similar to a crossbow, but much larger and it could shoot arrows or stones. In 1989, there were archaeologists that were working by the Israeli-Syrian border when they found these large stones close to what seemed to be the remains of a ballista, but around 1995, the stones ended up getting stolen and it took a while for anyone to notice. Fast forward to 2015 and the same stones that were stolen ended up in the courtyard of a museum in Israel with a note left from the person who stole them. The note explained that ever since they took them, he had experienced terrible luck and believed the stones were the reason. He had a very successful business that suddenly began to fail after he took the stones and later his family abandoned him and he was forced to get rid of almost all of his possessions to settle all of his debts so as to not go bankrupt. He mentioned that he believed the stones were cursed and that they were the root of all of his problems. Whether or not these stones are actually cursed or if this was just some pretty heavy karma, I hope this guy has been able to get his life back on track. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Golden Eagle. This car was a 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition and it has been blamed for the death of around 14 people, which is 14 too many if you ask me. It was said that this car started out as a police car originally, but then there were three officers assigned to this car who all ended up taking their lives and other people's lives in horribly violent ways. Not in the car, but still, super weird that this all seemed to happen after they had been using the car for work. Because of this strange correlation, it ended up being sold off to another man. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it was said that because of the rumored cursed car, it became a point of interest for vandals. People began vandalizing the car only to meet their own untimely fates, which were all met in strange ways. For example, it was said that one vandal died from being struck by lightning, and another ended up being decapitated by an 18-wheeler. It is said that the curse is so strong that 
that one kid decided to merely touch the car and it sent him into madness as he went on to commit atrocious crimes that I can't even detail here on YouTube. The car now belongs to Wendy Allen who supposedly collects and decorates haunted cars for a living, so it seems as though it's finally found its home far, far, far away from everyone else. In our number 4 spot today we have the Myrtle's Plantation Mirror. Myrtle's Plantation is located in St. Francisville, Louisiana and it is said to be one of the most haunted places in the entire world. One of the reasons for this spooky reputation is because of a mirror that resides inside. It is said that this mirror holds the spirit of Sarah Woodruff and her two children. Legend goes that a woman named Chloe was a slave at the plantation who drew up a plan to get revenge on the owners of the plantation, Sarah and her husband. Chloe baked a cake full of poison for them but it ended up only being Sarah and two of her children who consumed the poisonous cake. When they passed away, it is said that their spirits went into the only mirror that was uncovered at the time, thus the haunted mirror was born. People who have since visited the plantation have claimed to see the family in the reflection as well as the handprints of small children on the glass despite continuous polishing. In our number 3 spot today we have the Surrey Ghost Car. On December 11th of 2002, a call came into the Surrey Police Department. The caller reported that they had just seen a car lose control and run off the road and then presumably crash. It was of course an emergency call, but not necessarily anything out of the ordinary. That was until authorities got to the location and realized that they couldn't find any kind of evidence of a crash. They kept searching and ended up finding a maroon colored car that was nose down in a ditch nearby, but this car was covered in so much undergrowth that it must have been here for months. This meant that somehow this crash went undetected for 5 months and worst of all, so did the body that lay nearby. Using dental records they were able to identify the body as a man who had been wanted for robbery since July of that year. It is said that the sighting of the car leaving the road was a ghostly replay of the events that had taken place 5 months prior. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments if you think the witness saw a cursed reenactment of the fatal crash or if you think something else is at play here. In our number 2 spot today we have the destiny ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the incredibly young age of just 30 one years old, and there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the destiny ring. This ring was one that he picked up from a California jeweler. Before purchasing it, there were warnings of the stories which claimed this ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said that after this ring came into his possession, his luck began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career began to struggle. From there, he fell incredibly ill, and when he passed away, he was wearing this cursed ring. From there, after his death, his lover ended up receiving the ring, but once it was in her possession, she too fell extremely ill and decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, which has led the ring to now being placed in a bank vault, all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone ever again. In our number one spot today, we have Letta the doll. Why do all the cursed dolls look like they would be cursed? You know what I mean? Like, there's no cursed doll out there that is surprisingly cursed. They all look creepy to begin with. Anyway, Letta is a doll that is said to be around 200 years old and extremely cursed. This doll is called Letta for short as its full name is Letta Me Out of Here. Really clever. The doll was originally found underneath a house which definitely feels like the origin story of a haunted doll. This creepy discovery came 47 years ago and apparently Letta still lives with the man who found him. The hauntings of Letta include things like the doll walking around on its own at night, the owners finding objects around the house that have been moved into odd places, some people have seen Letta move right in front of their own eyes, and the owner also reports finding little doll sized scuff marks around the house as well. It is said that this doll once belonged to a child who passed away while holding it, thus their spirit became trapped inside of the doll. Apparently one day in an interview about Letta, as the interviewer was asking questions about the little boy, the doll began to move in her lap. Yeah, no thank you. Letta has his own Instagram and Facebook page in case you want to hear more about all the creepiness surrounding this cursed doll. In our number 10 spot today we have the Dybbuk box. The box which was originally just a plain old wine box is said to have been possessed by a Dybbuk, which in Jewish mythology is a malicious demon that takes over the bodies of living people and uses them for evil. The box began to gain attention in 2001 when it was being auctioned off on eBay. The seller explained that he had bought it at an estate sale of a woman who had survived 
after the Holocaust. When he first opened the box, he found two 1920s pennies, a lock of blonde hair bound with a cord, a lock of black hair bound with a cord, a small statue engraved with the Hebrew word shalom, a small golden wine goblet, one dried rosebud, and a single candle holder with four octopus shaped legs. Since he bought the box, he reported that strange things began happening, such as really horrific nightmares for him and anyone who had stayed around or touched the box. And when he gave the box to his mother as a birthday gift, she suffered a stroke the same day. The box ended up in the hands of Zach Bagan, who is a paranormal investigator, and it now resides in his haunted museum. The box also gained even more attention in 2018 when Post Malone touched it, and has apparently been dealing with the repercussions of that ever since. Coming in at number 9 is Busby Stoop Chair, aka the Dead Man's Chair. Lovely, great, what a time to be alive, or well, clearly not. Now this chair is apparently haunted by the infamous murderer Thomas Busby. Now Busby was hanged in 1702 for murdering his father-in-law Daniel. Now the reason he killed him is varied. One story claims they were in business together and had an argument and Thomas lost his temper and then he killed him. The other story is that Daniel sat on his chair without permission and then he killed him. Either way, both are pretty ridiculous, but again, one of them has to have happened. Now right before Thomas was executed, he was granted his final request and his was to have a last drink in his chair. And as he sat on it, he said, death shall come swiftly to anyone that dares to sit in my chair. Because frankly, he was salty and wanted to watch the world burn. And he successfully did. Since that moment, death actually has come to many, many people who have sat on the chair. So much so, the landlord actually donated it to the Thirsk Museum. But even they had trouble with people wanting to sit on it and commit suicide, so they actually had to hang it from the ceiling. Can you imagine? This chair is so screwed that they actually had to hang it from the ceiling so people wouldn't sit on it and kill themselves. Like, y'all, y'all on some bull****. <laughs> At number 8 we have the wedding dress. Now this one is just sad and filled with sorrow and it's just simply not fun. So back in 1849, Anna Baker, the daughter of a very rich family, fell in love with a low class iron worker. Ah, the classic classist conundrum. My English teacher would have loved that alliteration and honestly I did too. Even though it was hard to say, not gonna lie, it did take me a few takes. Either way, she was hell bent on marrying this boy despite knowing her father would never accept it. She begged him, she pleaded with him, but he refused to budge. Well, let's face it guys, when a girl wants a boy, believe me, she will do anything to be with him, me included. Hopeless romantic, what can I say? Either way, Anna even bought a wedding dress in hopes they would get married one day and that day just never came. Her dad bought the iron mill her boyfriend worked for and had him move to a different city and so in anger and protest, Anna promised her dad she would never marry anyone regardless of how many suitors they brought in for her. When her father finally died, her true love was also gone, so she spent her days angry and alone, which is understandable, I'd be fuming too. Her servants who had been in the house since she was little and basically raised her were sad when they used to see her dancing and walking around the house in the wedding dress. They felt like a part of her had died a long time ago and they were right. She passed away in 1914 and the baker's mansion was turned into a museum and that dress was put in a glass case inside her bedroom. Visitors report seeing a woman look back at them through the glass when they look at the dress which could mean she's very much still wearing it even in the afterlife. Others say they've seen the dress move despite there obviously being no wind inside the glass case. Whichever you saw, whatever you want to believe, this is a sad story. Love story. RT if you cry every time. I certainly do. A filling on number 7 slot is the necklace. Now this story was shared by one of CT Post's readers and she said she was gifted an antique glass necklace by her husband's family. But whenever she would wear it, she would always, always have an accident involving water. She'd knock over a glass, a flower vase would break, someone would drop their drink on her, she even fell into the pool at one point. Despite all these happenings, the woman never attributed them to the necklace until one day her mother-in-law came over and said how nice it was to see her wearing the necklace. She went on to say it belonged to her great aunt and that she was actually a survivor of the Titanic. So I mean that makes a lot more sense, bloody hell, like I get it now. So either the reader is extremely clumsy or the necklace is haunted by the bad juju of the Titanic. There's just no in between. It's one or the other. Now in a 
Alex is Robert. Now Robert is a haunted doll that was owned by painter and author Robert Eugene Otto and yes he named the doll after himself. Narcissistic we know. But we don't talk about it, it's fine. Now there are two origin stories about how the doll fell into Robert's hands. Now the first is that his granddad got it in Germany and gave it to him as a birthday gift back in 1904. And the other is that their servant gave him the doll as either a gift or as revenge for getting fired. I'd go with the latter. Now either way however he got it he became very obsessed with it and basically took it with him everywhere he went. Now looks wise it is very creepy. It's a straw filled doll wearing a sailor's outfit with holes in its face, no mouth and just a not very nice looking thing all around. It's just not ideal. And it was quite big as well so I'm like Robert how did you carry this around with you? It's probably as big as you. Either way legend has it the doll was aware of its surroundings and its facial expressions would change. The servant girl had a background in voodoo and hence the doll was apparently able to move as well. The family would hear it giggle and it would move things around Robert's room. Robert's parents even started seeing him talk to himself in two completely different voices when no one was around and then they soon moved it to the attic away from him where it stayed till Robert got married and then later died. Apparently the doll disappeared after Robert's death and after his house was sold to various different people. Now the doll caused the future house owners a lot of horrible mishaps, broken bones, car accidents, divorce, losing their jobs and more. The doll was then donated to the East Martello Museum in 1994 where people who visited it reported going through misfortunes after seeing the doll. So it's safe to say this doll just has beef with everyone in general. Coming in at number 5 is everything in the shop. Not even an exaggeration I swear to god. So back in 2017 Daniel Parker an antiques dealer working at Barnes the Antique Center saw something in the store CCTV cameras. He came into work that day and saw a rocking deer toy from the 60s on the ground when he 100% knew it was very much on the shelf before he left the day before. When rewinding the footage you can see the toy moving on its own just straight up. Nothing is near it to make it move, it just moves for a while before getting pushed to the ground. Now Daniel said he tried recreating the movement and making it sway to see if it would fall on its own and it didn't. He claims there have been hundreds of unexplained events in the two years he's owned the shop that he's never gotten to the bottom of. Customers blamed the ghosts of little children running around inside the shop but he doesn't and buy it. Paintings in the shop have even moved and a cabinet once randomly exploded with zero trigger. His 11 year old daughter even went into the basement of the shop one day to explore and she ran out screaming claiming an arm had grabbed her. Daniel. You may be in denial but I am certainly not. I feel like a child's ghost is like attached to each of the antiques in the store which is just not a great selling point to be honest. Maybe include that bit, maybe include the haunting part in like the fine print. Don't say it outright. <laughs> loopholes. Eamon's loopholes 101. Now apparently the site where the shop is used to be a mill in the 1800s and the mill owner hanged himself in the 60s right in the middle of where the shop is right now. So I mean it could be a bunch of kids or this bored mill owner's ghost, we don't really know. Either way there are ghosts, there are haunted items that we don't want. No, no more items. At number 4 is the skull of Anne Griffith. Now technically you can't own the skull unless you live in the place it's located which is Burton Agnes Hall in Yorkshire. Now Agnes Hall is a proper Tudor mansion and 300 years ago it was owned by the three daughters of Sir Henry Griffith who we don't need to know about because he's irrelevant. He's probably one of the you know bougie dukes and sirs that there's just so many of in England. Either way all three loved the house and did their best to make it the best it could possibly be especially Anne. But one night on the way back from visiting friends Anne was attacked by some highwaymen. Her body was left for dead outside but she was brought back to the house but sadly died a few days later. While being half in and out of consciousness in her last few days she told her sisters her soul wouldn't rest unless a part of her could stay in our beautiful home as long as it shall last. She made them promise to sever her head after she died and keep it at Agnes Hall. But after she died her sisters couldn't bring themselves to do it, which I don't blame them for, and so her body was buried in the churchyard but then her full on ghost walked into the house and scared the hell out of everybody. Way to make an entrance Anne. She would slam doors in the house, things would fall all over the place and there was always a painful groaning sound echoing in the corridors at night. Her sisters eventually consulted the local vicar who told them to exhume the body and keep their promise. Come on guys we don't break promises especially in death. 
let's not do that. Her grinning, hideous skull, not my words, the articles, was then placed in the home and all the scary occurrences just stopped. A few years passed though and a servant of the house threw the head away onto a cart and the horse leading it immediately stopped and refused to move. It was lashed a bunch of times and still didn't move and the girl had to eventually admit that she did it and the skull was returned. Then another family owned the house years later and buried the skull in their backyard but then started experiencing horrible hauntings and they too had to bring the skull back in. So in conclusion, don't mess with Catherine Ann Griffiths. Mic drop. Filling our number 3 slot is The Foot Book by Dr. Sue. So apparently the backstory of this one is pretty messed up and I don't know why I'm saying apparently because I've read it and it is. It was owned by a family that reported hearing children's voices whispering around their house every time their daughter read it. As if the voices weren't bad enough, they felt this overwhelming unsettling feeling of being watched which they just couldn't shake. They called in paranormal investigator Shane Burgey who found out that the book was bought in a yard sale from a house where a quadruple homicide had taken in place. One of the victims was a two year old girl and after more in depth analysis they found out that the stain on the cover of the book wasn't just dust or food, it was a blood stain. Nah, B? And now imagine being so happy giving this book to your kid and then realizing ages after she's been reading a murder blood stained book this whole time, I'd be like ugh, uh, child services just come take her away now, I failed. Shane took it from the family and donated it to the National Museum of the Paranormal in West Virginia and that was the end of that. So I I mean, you can't own it yourself, but you can look at it. Just don't touch and don't read. Now at number two is the Women of Lem statue, also known as the Goddess of Death statue. Now the statue was carved from pure limestone and was found in Lemba in Cyprus back in 1878, but was actually made sometime in 3500 BC. Now looks wise, it doesn't really look like a woman, but I mean, art is subjective, right? It can look like anything. It has two sort of stub arms coming out on the side, and then another rounder pair underneath them, and I can kind of see how it kind of resembles a body but also not. Now the first person to own the statue was Lord Elfont but within 6 years of having it, all 7 members of his family died in very bizarre ways. The next owner was Evil Minucci whose entire family also died within 4 years of getting it. Then comes Lord Thompson Knoll whose entire family also died within 4 years as well. Now after murdering various entire families, the statue disappeared off the radar for a bit and then re-emerged in the hands of Sir Alan Biverbrook. Yes, all the owners had booze fancy names because it was the olden days you guys let's just sweep under the rug they all sounded like a Winston or a Churchill and like god knows what I'm not hating before you guys are like you're a hater either way Biverbrook his two kids and his wife died later that year but before it could take his two sons they realized hey our lives kind of became shit after we got the statue maybe it's a statue so they quickly donated the statue to the Royal Scottish Museum but then the museum's curator who took care of the statue died in the same year so really the statue stops at nothing. The statue is now in a glass case and can't hurt anyone else and ironically it was originally meant to be a fertility statue for an unspecified goddess but then obviously became the goddess of death. Accurate. Facts. Straight facts. And finally, at number one are the Tormans bunk beds. I know, right? How could bunk beds possibly be scary? Well, you're about to find out. So this may be the newest thing on our list since the bunk beds were bought by the Talman family in 1987. They bought them for $100, which by the way, a bargain number one and a red flag number two. They assembled it and then stored it in their basement. When they finally moved the bed upstairs, that's when things started going horribly wrong. For the next nine months, the family were constantly terrorized. The the children started getting sick regularly and their son Danny said his clock radio started turning on by itself and switching channels and its vindicator just moved by itself. His parents didn't believe him till it happened to his dad Alan. Now Alan was painting the walls in the basement and put the brush on the table. He went up to eat and came back to find the brush in the bucket bristles up. Sus. Very sus. When his daughter was sleeping in the bed itself she said she saw a red eyed witch behind her door one night and the next night saw fire spread in her room and then disappear appear into thin air. Danny said he saw the exact same thing the night after. They called in a pastor who was sure there was an evil demonic presence in the house and he was right. Banging doors, weird voices calling out and hallucinations for days. Now days before Christmas Danny saw something so horrific he cried asking his parents to just move house. Like end it all people. Alan was done by that point and then cried out and was like hey if you want to fight someone you ghosts fight me. And so they did. Three weeks later he got home from a late night 
shift at 2am and heard howling from the garage. He went in and heard a voice saying come here. No one was there but suddenly a fire ignited right in front of him. He ran to get an extinguisher but when he came back there was absolutely no fire, not even remnants of a fire. He then started sleeping next to his daughter to protect her but saw a fog one night that whispered you're dead to him. A relative even watched the children one night and reported seeing the same figure the kids had seen and screamed her lungs out. Two weeks later they had had enough, finally took them bloody long enough and then they destroyed the bunk beds and the haunting stopped completely. Damn be. Ain't nobody got time for that. But also bunk beds are just very uncomfortable. I used to share one with my sisters. Poh. Nah.